Florida's space coast is always busy with launch activity, but when you get to fly over it, you realise there's much more than meets the eye. We are able to spot new rocket hardware arriving, new structures arising from the ground, intriguing movements from Blue Origin, and a whole lot more. We'll also take a look at what's coming up with Starship activity at the Cape, which may surprise you. As usual with these flyovers, it's not just my face you get to look at. I'll be going over the latest with the arrival of Artemis hardware. Soya will be taking a look at SpaceX, but first up is Adrian with Blue Origin. At Blue Origin's Exploration Park campus, it was fairly quiet, but since we flew on a weekend, that's to be expected. Due to this, we sadly didn't catch any peaks at hardware through open doors. But that doesn't mean there isn't some cool stuff to look at. We caught some great close-ups of the large amounts of hardware that has been growing outside of the main production building over the last year or so. While this isn't actual rocket hardware, it's cool to see all the different things that go into the process of making the rocket hardware inside of the factory. Down by the Reef Pathfinder building and warehouse, there are some frame segments for a new fabric tent. Once this tent is erected, it may be used as a quick extra storage space or maybe even to aid the construction of new facilities. Before moving on to other places, perhaps we should mention the large amount of construction going on along Space Commerce Way, which goes right alongside Blue's property at KAC. The Buzzy Road is in the process of being widened from two to four lanes. This is an important update for the infrastructure around the space center as it grows busier and needs to support more traffic. But if you want to see lots more infrastructure, let's take a look at this. In mid-September, Blue Origin submitted plans for a new facility within Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Adding to the already impressive spread of facilities, the new site will cover nearly 60 acres and have a purpose to provide a building and associated infrastructure for the refurbishment of launch vehicles and reuse of existing large and small components for rocket launches. From this we can assume this to be the home of a refurbishment facility for New Glenn hardware. Primarily first stages of course, but down the line maybe even second stages? However, an interesting note is that of the 60 acre site, only 24 acres are currently dedicated to the refurbishment facility. The remaining 35 acres of the site will be developed in the future. This may leave room for an expansion of the refurbishment facility or be for something entirely different. At LC36, we were able to spot a large piece of hardware that we haven't seen in a very long time. The New Glenn First Stage Simulator or GS1 Simulator has been rolled out of the hangar and is now led next to the Second Stage Simulator. As a reminder, Blue had the simulator built so they could practice operations with something the same size and weight as a dry New Glenn First Stage. A similar process happened for SLS. A core stage pathfinder was built with the same size, shape, weight and balance as a real flight stage. This allowed operators to rehearse operations before doing so with a real flight article. While unclear why the GS1 simulator is outside, with it on cradles and set aside from the ramp, it doesn't appear that Blue are in a rush to take it out to the pad, if at all. Could this mean we will see actual New Glenn hardware on the pad in a not so distant future? Well, you can now figure that out, thanks to our new camera views on Space Coast Live. From these views we can now see LC36 and whenever they roll out something like this, you can bet we will be watching it closely. Near the two stage simulators, Blue's SPMT system, which is used for ferrying the two transporter erectors between the hangar and the pad, is seen sitting on the ramp with counterweights on board. With the Mini TE still vertical on the pad, this may be a sign that Blue are getting ready to lower the TE and roll it back to the hangar. At the northern end of the pad, we were able to spot both existing Jarvis tanks by the tents. Last year, Blue moved the original Jarvis tank to LC-12 for storage. Now the fact that it's back at the tents may suggest that it's going to be scrapped. On the topic of Jarvis tanks, a 25cm per pixel synthetic aperture radar satellite image from Umbra in late September allows us to see through the fabric tents. 
and see signs of hardware being staged inside. It's very likely that these are domes and barrel sections for future test tanks. Also, it's a very cool example how SAR imagery can be used to peer through fabric structures. You can probably also guess which writer made me say this in the script. Now, you may be wondering, what's going on with SpaceX? Well, here's Sawyer to give you all the latest on SpaceX at the Cape. Well, Adrian, let's see. The latest on SpaceX at the Cape is that they're launching a lot. So much that it's almost becoming common to see boosters going around up and down the Cape these days. And that's what we saw during this flyover. Right outside of SpaceX's Hangar X building at Roberts Road, we saw this super sooty booster, which may have been B-1060. This booster flew for a 17th time, landed, and is now back to the hangar for what we hope will be another few weeks of refurbishment and preparation for more flights. But that's not all that's happening here at SpaceX's Roberts Road. You might see that, compared to our previous flyover, some hardware is missing. Three of the four sections for the new crew access tower have already been moved out of here and transported to Space Launch Complex 40. We'll talk more about those a little bit later. All that remains is the fourth section of this tower, the topmost section, and it looks well outfitted with all sorts of hardware. Conduits, stairwells, elevator shaft, air conditioning, you name it. It's very likely that SpaceX may roll this out in the next few days or even weeks to complete the tower. So perhaps by next flyover, it'll look similar to how it did just a handful of months ago with no Dragon components. Of course, a few meters north remains another set of tower sections for a completely different rocket, Starship. You probably remember, but building started back around the middle of 2022. And then after building seven of these segments, SpaceX stopped construction on them. Well. Not much due to report as far as we know, but a good reminder that these are still there and have been left untouched for quite a few months now. And we actually have had a bit of insight into Starship's future in Florida. Since our last flyover, NASA has released the Draft Environmental Assessment for SpaceX's expansion at Roberts Road. Under this plan, SpaceX wants to expand its area footprint at the Roberts Road complex. According to this draft, SpaceX would take 100 acres of land directly north from where they are now. This land would have buildings there totaling no more than 1.5 million square feet. That's about 140,000 square meters for those in metric land. And no taller than 400 feet in freedom units, aka 122 meters. In this document, there's a conceptual site plan for this expansion showing a building with a massive footprint taking up most of the land there and then another one much smaller in footprint right up to the north of it. The footprint of these buildings is very reminiscent of that of the Star Factory building and Mega Bays at Starbase. If you remember, SpaceX already started building out a similar pair of Star Factory and Mega Bay buildings here at Roberts Road, but decided to use the Star Factory buildings as some sort of Hangar X2. Yes, that's actually the name of the building now, by the way to support Starlink processing for Falcon 9 launches. As for the Mega Bay, while its foundations were built, all of the material for it went to Starbase to build a second Mega Bay down in Texas. It would seem as if SpaceX wants to return Starship operations back to KSE at some point, and they're already getting the paperwork in place. There are other things mentioned in the document, like the desire from SpaceX to consolidate operations at Roberts Road and abandon certain other facilities, such as Hangar AO at the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In fact, they're already doing this by operating a brand new and shiny launch and landing control center located on the north end of the Hangar X building. The draft also talks about expanding the Saturn Causeway by an extra 8 feet, or 2.4 meters, for transportation of loads of larger size. I can imagine a few things that SpaceX may want to move down that road that are of large size. <coughs> Starship. <clears throat> now, back to those tower segments. In the month and a half since our last flyover, they've not only moved to Slick 40, but have actually been stacked. Keep in mind, this is right next to where Falcon 9s are already launching at least twice per week. Definitely looks like we might have a fully finished tower in the very near future. Over at SpaceX's other launch pad, Launch Complex 39A. Here, SpaceX is preparing its next Falcon Heavy rocket for the launch of NASA's Psyche mission to explore a metal asteroid. No, not that kind of metal. Actual metals. SpaceX released pictures of Falcon Heavy's mission preparations. When we flew, it wasn't actually inside the hangar, but vertical at the pad, 
having just conducted its static fire only hours earlier. The rocket was then rolled back to the hangar for final payload integration. The launch of this mission was previously scheduled to occur on October 5th, but was delayed one week to no earlier than October 12th due to issues with the thrusters on the Psyche spacecraft that needed to be tuned ahead of launch. When the time comes, we'll be going live around 90 minutes before the launch, so be sure to click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and you know the drill. All of that so you don't miss the launch. Now on to port operations, where it looks like just read the instructions, one of SpaceX's booster recovery drone ships took the worst beating I've seen in a very long time, and honestly, Alex too, who wrote this. You can see the deck is all charred, and the poor octagrabber is all blackened out from the onslaught of soot and exhaust. That is quite the testament to SpaceX's launch cadence these days. No need for fancy paint on the drone ship or cleaning up the robot stabilizer. I mean, you know what they say. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. SpaceX isn't the only one, though, talking about more interesting buildings and rockets arriving back to the Cape. So I'm going to throw it over now to Ryan. Well, Sawyer, I heard you like buildings, so here's some more. Up at the launch and landing facility, the structure of Amazon's payload processing facility continues to grow. The walls and the roof are now starting to come together. It's starting to look like a proper building. As a reminder, this facility will be used to process Amazon's Kuiper Internet Constellation satellites and integrate them with either Vulcan or Nuglen fairings ahead of launch. At the northern end of the complex, we were able to spot an interesting set of freight carriages that had been parked at what is called the Suspect Siding Area. Believe it or not, these hold the segments for the solid rocket boosters of the SLS rocket set to fly in Artemis II. But you might have noticed that instead of 10 carriages, we can only see 8. SLS features two five-segment SRBs, so where have two of the segments gone? Well, they are actually already near the Vehicle Assembly Building. Not exactly at the VAB though, they are right outside the Rotation, Processing and Surge Facility, or RPSF. These two sections are actually the aftmost segments of the solid rocket boosters, and inside of this facility they will gain their skirts and nozzles. Once these are installed on these segments, the complete pair of aft segments will be brought to the VAB, which is just a few hundred meters away, and then be installed onto the mobile launcher to begin stacking operations. This shows that we're already well underway with Artemis II launch preparations, and we should see another SLS fully stacked relatively soon. Currently at Launch Complex 39B, Mobile Launcher 1 is undergoing all sorts of testing, from swing tests of the crew access tower to water deluge tests, and also including rehearsals with the crew of Artemis 2. The other Mobile Launcher, the one for Artemis 4 and beyond, is well underway in its construction, and we can already see a good chunk of the structure that will make up its platform and where the new SLS launch tower will be erected soon. It becomes even clearer with every flyover that the Cape isn't just a place where companies and agencies launch their hardware, but also where a lot of new facilities and buildings are being built to prepare this spaceport for the future. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.